you're going to like it. And so what happens is, I remember when I was pastoring the Baptist church over in, over in Minford, they didn't have running water. This was in 1971. They had two outhouses. And the, pa and, the, and the the deacon that was there, he said, I don't want to upgrade the church. I want two outhouses. And so, so but then he didn't want it to become modern. Well, Anybody with the right sense knows if, you, if, if somebody invents something good, you're going to try to use it, right? That's right. I mean, if I can do something faster, I want to do it. And so what happened, when the Greeks came in, they wanted to modernize Jewish life. <coughs> in order to modernize Jewish life, they brought in all of the hellish culture that Greece had, and they brought in with them their form of a religion. And so Herod brought in all of the luxuries and all of the theaters and all of the prostitution and all of the things in the world and the Jewish people said, you know, this is pretty good. How many Christians do you know that fall prey to that? Christians are, the Christians today, they look, you, you cannot tell a Christian from a lost person. We act like Christ, we act like them, we talk like them, we go where they go, we watch what they watch. And so by this time, the Jewish people were really enjoying what they were having. But there still were some who still were not who still wanted to have a Jewish state with with a desire to have how God wanted it to happen. Well, during nearly his whole life. Herod faced trouble within his own family. As early as 29 B.C., he had killed his wife out of jealousy. As the years went by, the whole matter was further complicated by the question of who would replace him on the throne. Well, you know, like many people with a strong willpower, Herod could not face the idea of losing his throne. Three of Herod's sons were put to death, and his brother escaped death only by dying. When Herod finally did die in 4 BC, two other sons had some claim to the throne, and Augustus finally settled the matter by splitting the inheritance between these two sons and a third one, and not allowing the title of king to any of them. Phew. In an age when the existence of smaller states depended not on their own strength but on the will of Rome, Herod kept Judah safe, secure, and prosperous. And yet, throughout his career, Herod suffered from being caught somewhere between Jews and Gentiles. And he began to rebuild the temple and act as a, product, as a protector and a spokesman for various Jewish communities scattered around the world. But despite his wishes to strengthen the Jewish state, he still sought to favor Rome, and this conflict would prove his ultimate failure. And it's hard to be the president of the United States, for instance, to try to please every country, knowing that if you don't do something, they could attack you. Why do you think we give money to these countries for? Why do you think we give a billion dollars to Iraq and Iran, and why do you think we support Israel? Because we realize that we're bribing them to keep peace with them. And Herod wanted to keep peace with Rome because Rome could come in and wipe out the entire state of Israel. And so he tried to have peace with Rome while at the same time the people, the Jews, they weren't like what's going on. They didn't have any, you know, they were going to fight to their death if they just kept quiet. I the reason I don't believe God believes in uprising. I don't know how much good did it did for Egypt to uprise like they did to you. You remember that big uprising in Egypt and the overthrow? Well, they're mm -hmm. back in the same shape they were to begin with. Right. I mean, we may not like what's going on in America, but I'm telling you what, it's still the best place in the world to live. Right. So, Herod had a lot to do with what was going on, and yet during all of this time, and there's much that could be said about all that, it is just to say this, that Luke wanted us to know that a real person in a real time lived in a real place and dealt with real people 
and John the Baptist was a part of that, and Jesus Christ was a part of that, and their parents were a part of that. So that secular history records for us, and that's where I got my information was from secular history, that it actually is recorded. In the days of Herod, king of Judah. The next phrase is, there was a certain priest named Zacharias. Now that's interesting. There was a certain priest named Zacharias. Now, we go from a king to the humblest man that probably lived. That's not probably true. A priest. He was a certain kind of priest. There was a certain priest. <coughs> a specific priest. You know, there... Uh, there are many Zacharias in the Bible, I understand. I was trying to find all their names, but Zacharias, the, the, the father of, of John the Baptist, kept coming up. Now, Luke mentions this man, Zacharias. Now, it was very interesting in this learning. I understand through history that at this time in Palestine, the, the, it says that there were 18,000 priests in Palestine. Zacharias was one of 18,000 priests. I'm just one of how many 300,000 preachers in America? I'm just one. Bill, you're not just two of yep. hundreds of thousands. God's got more than just us two. <laughs> Thank, <God. laughs> Thank the Lord for that, huh? God has a, you know, God has a preacher for his people. You know, and I looked and I said, God has Bill and I for you guys. You know, he's good, isn't he? He was one of many priests of the times. And we're going to bring out several things about Zacharias in the next several weeks. And that is where we find our story. We're going to find four or five things. And according to, to the Gospel of Luke, during the reign of Herod, there was a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abba, Abba, A-B-A-I, whose wife Elizabeth was also of the priestly family of Aaron. The evangelist Luke states that both the parents were righteous before God. <clears throat> I find that amazing that there still was people who were steadfast in their belief in God. And they were looking for the Messiah before God since they were blameless and observing the commandments and ordinance of the Lord. And when the events related to Luke began, their marriage was childless because Elizabeth was barren and they both were very old. Now, he was a priest and the duties of the temple in Jerusalem. And so I decided, now he was a priest, and this got me this got me stuck on my seat for a couple. Because when I was when I was in seminary, you know, I wasn't real interested. You know, it, it, it is funny. When I was in seminary, I wasn't real interested in a lot of that stuff. I'm sitting there thinking, this is really boring. Why do I care about all this stuff? I want to get out and build a church. I want to get out and pastor a church. I want to get out and get people saved. All I thought that was important was for me to get out and start preaching. Duh. What was I going to preach? I mean, I could not connect knowing the Bible and preaching. You know, I wanted to get married, but I had no idea that with, with marriage brings children. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea that I needed to learn to be a father. I had no idea to learn how to be a husband. And I certainly did not know how to be a pastor. I thought I knew it, but when I'm in the classroom... And I'm hearing the professors talk on these subjects. I'm saying, oh, 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 when's the class going to be over? Now, it wasn't quite that bad. I'm, honestly, I wasn't. But, you know, I saw everybody around me. 
ha, ha, ha. Oh, man. And they wouldn't take notes. Now, I get out, and I'm saying, where was I? Did I go to sleep? Why didn't I learn this? I could have been smart. Why am I now having to learn this over the last few years? And so, I wasn't a Jew. I didn't like Sanford Beals anyway. He was, a, he was an arrogant, short Jewish person that when he came on the scene, he, he, he just bragged on his Judaism. And he was just a nasty little fellow. You remember him, Charity? He was a nasty little fellow, Jewish person. And I didn't care too much about him. And therefore, I wasn't too much caring about Jewish people. But yet, they are God's people. And I should have learned from him some things that would have been important. And so, so he was a priest. And I would say, so what? What does a priest do? The duties at the temple in Jerusalem. Let me tell you something. I want to get I want to get that charity. Did anybody watch the Day of Discovery today? Most fascinating. Most fast they had the most fascinating stories. Today was on archaeology. And I hadn't got to it in my Sunday school lesson. One of the evidence that the Bible is the Word of God is because archaeologists have discovered many things in the Bible. Amen. And this, and this, uh, this, the, uh, our daily bread, the day of discovery. They have, they did. I have never in my, I have never seen this before. In all of my years, I have never seen. If I go to Israel, I don't want to go. I, I, if I go to Israel, I want to see what they saw. And they, the archaeologists have discovered. They have discovered so many things that I can't describe to you. All the things that archaeologists have discovered that have been there since the days of Jesus. Since King David. It just verifies their authenticity of the Word of God. And I am so thrilled that someone has documented and taken the time to uncover that's been blanket for thousands of years. So, the duties of the, at the temple in Jerusalem alternated between each of the family lines that had descended from the appointed by the King David in 1 Chronicles 24. 